false queen. You're gonna kill it. Slay the day away. Slay. A girl can do anything a guy can do, but in heels. There's a special place in hell for women who don't support other women. Ugh, men are the worst. I wish I was a lesbian. Did any of that make you want to kill yourself? Then we probably have a lot in common. Today I'm gonna discuss all of the reasons why I was obsessed with feminism as a young adult teenager one girl and then kind of talk about all of the things that pissed me off about feminism where I think it kind of went wrong. I want to figure out why the word feminism results in angry stress hormones pumping through my veins. Where did we go wrong? Why do feminists piss everyone off? It's funny because this is such an overused topic, but also something that society has misconstrued and like gone in the wrong direction with, in my opinion. Um, and made it like this overly branded, overly capitalized movement. When in reality, we haven't actually fixed the problems that feminism was originally supposed to address. And I think we need to take a little trip down memory lane to figure out what feminism was about in the first place. Girl power, babe. If I'm sweaty, I shouldn't have to keep a blazer on to feel respected by you. So for a little bit of background about me, all the women in my family were married by 23, started having kids by 23. So that's like three older sisters. They were all just knocked up, ring on their finger, ready to go. And like their life was kind of over as an individual by that time. And I always just thought that that's what it meant to be a woman. I just thought that I was gonna get married and have babies. And then in high school, I started learning all about the different ways that that's not the way it's supposed to be, babe. I started learning about rape culture and the way that women are constantly pandering to men for compliments and for acceptance and I realized all the ways that I felt inferior to my brothers and I was like something's not right so yeah it seemed like this new thing to me like I didn't really know anything about feminism until high school no one told me that that was an option to just like fight the system. I was like, okay, this is sexy, this is fun. And then when I started college, I went to this tiny college in North Carolina for one semester that was just like so conservative. I was on the cross country team and our coach wouldn't like let us wear sports bras. We had to be completely covered up. And the boys would be running around in these tiny like spandex shorts with like their dick and balls like flying around everywhere. And I would constantly like get the girlies riled up being like, this isn't right. Like what the hell we should like, why are our stomachs more sexual than a man's literal genitalia this makes no sense it pissed me off and i was always like fighting the power i felt good because it felt like i really had something to fight like these obstacles were so present in my life and so kind of obvious oh and then there was of course like the lacrosse boys i would sit at their lunch table and i remember one day they were all passing around this meme that was like girls should be like butterflies like hard to catch and beautiful but really they're like mosquitoes easy to swat and they were all laughing being like ha 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 girls are such easy sluts we gotta keep them in shape like we gotta we gotta like i'm like do you want to fuck them or do you want to do you want them to be hard to fuck like what do you want but i would stand up at their table and be like you guys are assholes i bet none of you guys get laid i was really just giving it to them and then all of a sudden something changed and i just stopped thinking about feminism maybe it's because i left the south maybe it's because i stopped hanging around misogynistic men well yeah a little bit. Also, weird coincidence where as soon as I was coming to terms with my sexuality, realizing I was gay, I stopped caring about feminism. Almost in this way, like, I think it was one of two things. I think one, I had more important things to focus on. I was like, okay, now I have to deal with being oppressed for being a lesbian. Who cares about being a woman? Like, being a straight woman was easy compared to this shit. I don't know, this logic makes no sense. And also, I kind of felt like it was just such an obvious issue. Like, it didn't need to be discussed ever because who's mad? So now we enter the era that I just stopped thinking about feminism and didn't really want to associate it with it for I think a slew of reasons. Let's get into it. I think feminism took this turn where it became associated with only a certain type of woman. I actually like to call this Hillary Clinton feminism. 
or girl boss feminism, which to me is not my idea of feminism at all. Because this form of feminism has nothing to do with abolishing the patriarchy or finding happiness and sovereignty. And it also has nothing to do with bringing up the collective. It is only about the individual pursuit of success in terms of how men define success. Yeah, like think about like Hillary Clinton's like breaking glass ceilings, entering male spaces, and trying to gain that validation from men because they still crave the proximity to men. And the issue with this is it rewards the women who have the closest proximity to men. So it rewards mostly white straight women who still want to have babies, marry a man, have a corporate job, and climb that ladder of success in terms of how men would view you as successful. Which if you think about it, isn't feminism at all. It's literally just doing exactly what men want you to do, which is have their babies and make their food. Where's the anarchy? We don't really care about the feminine energy of like empathy and creativity and growth and involvement. Thinking with your creative mind rather than your logical mind. Like those are all like values and gifts that I think are lacking in society. Currently, feminism is doing nothing for me to push that forward. It's basically just taking a shitty thing that we already had and making it slightly less shitty for a select group of people, namely straight white women. To sum up why I wasn't into feminism for so long, I felt like it meant that I was subscribing to this brand that really only cared about screwing up the system or continuing this like terrible world that men had created and kind of just like finding space in it as women rather than making our own space and making a better system. I truly believe women are the only ones like that are capable of doing that, along with a few helpful boys to put the bricks on top. You know what I mean? Like in my opinion, I think women should be like making the major decisions and men should be like, okay, like what do you think we should do? And then we'll go from there. Rather than us being like, what do you, like do you think I'm pretty? And also let me slave away as your wife and your servant and your chef, a mother to your children as well as the mother to you. Mm, it's not really doing it for me. And now we arrive at the point where I am today, where I've realized that me and a lot of my friends and people I know are experiencing a slew of problems that really should have been fixed by feminism and that I thought weren't really issues anymore. But recently it's become glaringly obvious that nothing has been fixed and we basically need to get to the root and the core of what feminism should have been in the first place if we want anything to freaking change around here. So I'm just gonna go through them and discuss them a little bit and let you guys in on some of my fun ideas. First of all, it's become glaringly obvious to me, especially through my journey into discovering my sexuality, I've realized that women are really only useful as a sexual commodity. Men basically don't want anything to do with you if they realize there's no chance that they can fuck you. If men realize they don't have a chance with you, they cast you aside as useless. I was trying to figure this out for so long why I had such a, a gut reaction when I would get outed by my friend and when I was in a social situation where I was talking to a man or multiple men. I was like, why does it make me so terrified and uncomfortable when my friend goes, oh, by the way, Carolyn's gay, when in reality I should just be like, yeah, like I don't give a shit. But I realized it's because even in having casual conversations with men, they don't care about me unless they think that there's a chance they're gonna F me. It feels pretty shitty when you're just trying to have a good night out and maybe make a friend, maybe just have a pleasant social interaction when all of a sudden someone casts you aside as completely meaningless. It doesn't always have to be about this, guys. And it also made it obvious that any charming personality traits I may have, any fun conversations we may have are completely secondary, if not tertiary, to the fact that they want to smash. And it just made it obvious to me that women are still viewed as commodities, as objects, as something to be obtained, a fun game, and all that good stuff. This definitely made me regress back into the closet. I had been identifying as a lesbian for years and then all of a sudden last year, I made all these straight friends and I was going to all these parties and I was like, I'm bisexual again. <laughs> Because I wanted to have a good time. I guess if wanting to still interact with men occasionally makes me bisexual. I don't know. On to the most obvious inequality between men and women is the physical danger of it all. The fear factor. And I'm not talking about that show from the early 2000s when they made each other eat cockroaches and shit. I'm talking about the general notion that I'm scared even walking down the street in daytime because the other day I got followed by a psycho in Washington Square Park that kept screaming he was an incel and kept running after me until I was finally able to escape into a coffee shop where I had to wait 45 minutes for a police officer to come as he circled the block and knocked on the window. We're living in hell, guys. And I want it to stop. I don't want to be afraid anymore. 
And I hate that every time I talk to men about it, they're like, oh, not all men, not all men. I'm like, yes, not all men are gonna be the scary incel weirdos that stalk me into a coffee shop, but all women have been in the situation where they've been stalked, they've been harassed, they've been assaulted. So obviously it's an issue. Just because you aren't out roofying, gang banging, doesn't mean your BFF, Mark over there, isn't doing that. So wake up, you fucking idiots, and admit it. If it's so common that women are assaulted, then it must be common that you have friends who are freaking rapists. Yeah, I think the sad part about this was that getting harassed is such a normal part of my life that I don't even think of it as something that could possibly change. I walk out of my door and I expect yelled at, followed, whatever. Like those are all normal things to me. And for so many years, I like, didn't even think about it. Cause I was just like, oh yeah, this is like what it's like to exist. I think the trauma keeps the woman at this low state where we feel afraid to do anything about it because we're so in our fear headspace. This just looming threat of men being more powerful and strong than you honestly makes it hard for me to do general things at this point. Like, anyways. Another reason I think that things haven't changed very much is because misogyny is the norm. So we're not really pushing men to do more or to like help us more, to protect women more, to stop harassing women more because we expect them to harass women. Or when a man does basic things like do his own dishes or like cook a meal, we're like, wow, what a stand up gentleman. Why are we giving them so much credit? Oof. Okay, wait, <laughs> my next point is what I believe to be the sneakiest little way, the most conniving secret that men have over women that has kept us complacent for so long. And this is that I believe men control us with compliments. They make us feel like we don't have any conception of our own self-worth, how funny we are, how pretty we are, how interesting we are, how capable we are, until they tell us. Um, and this can be seen like anytime a guy gives you a compliment on how you look and you're just like, oh, thank you. Honestly, they get kind of offended or let alone if you say, I know, Whew, they get pissed. Immediately, I've said one time I was like, oh my God, I think I said, I know. And like a guy was like, well, he's like a creepy guy kind of harassing me. He was like, oh, you're actually ugly. He flipped the switch on me because he doesn't want me knowing that I'm pretty. Why do you think that freaking songs like you don't know you're beautiful are so popular? It's like this narrative that the perfect girl has no idea that she's attractive. Men are constantly trying to tell you that you're hot so that they can get with you or at least like have some sort of control over you. And they act like they're the first man to ever tell you that. Also this strategy, whoop, my matcha spilling. <laughs> The strategy is the easiest way to pit women against other women because things like, oh, you're so funny, usually go along with things like girls usually aren't funny, but you're funny. And then it gives you this weird superiority complex over other women. You're a special bitch because some ugly dude told you that. Last summer after me and my ex-girlfriend broke up, I was like, oh, I want to get with guys because I feel like they're less drama or I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. I was going through it. And I ended up like having a little thing with this guy and the whole time I felt like my mind regressed into this primitive state where all I could think about was like, does he think I'm cute? Like, am I being funny enough? Am I being like good enough? And I felt like this little doll that had to be perfect. And mind you, this guy was freaking gross. Like he wasn't even that cute. He didn't even have a job. I'm pretty sure I paid for all this stuff when we went out. I was like, what, what is this? Why has my mind regressed back into this state? And it's because we're programmed that way. Like women are programmed in this way to make us feel like we're useless unless we get the approval from men because that's the gold standard. It's like an addiction. It's like once you feel that dopamine rush of, oh my God, like he thinks I'm pretty, he thinks I'm cool. It's like, you can't live without it. I found times in my life where I was feeding into this so much, like especially working in the service industry, I was so used to getting random compliments and it felt like the same as taking a hit of a jewel or like seeing that you have a bunch of likes on Instagram. It's all the same shit where it like hits your brain in the spot that makes you stupid and only want that like one thing. I think for a while I was consciously aware of this, but I wasn't subconsciously aware of all the ways that I was feeding into it and all the ways I felt like I wasn't truly ready to be free from the patriarchy because I was still so reliant on the way it made me feel. But now that I've realized that that's kind of a way that they control me, I had this epiphany that in my life, as I've gotten older, I've broken away from the grasps of men in all these ways. Realizing I was gay, I was like, okay, I don't need them for love. I don't need them for sex. And then not wanting to really have a real job where I'm working for men. The last straw that tied me to men was the seeking of their validation. Once I've broken from that, I'm ready to go full rogue. I'm ready to start a freaking rebellion. I'm ready to break out the guillotine for Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. So watch. Okay, I don't know if I should be saying this. I'm a little scared. 
But that's what makes women so dangerous. Once we draw farther and farther away from meeting them in this core way for all these different things, that's when true feminism can exist. Is when you don't need to pander to men anymore. You don't need to be pretty for them. You don't need to be funny for them. You just do it for your freaking self. Even if you're straight, okay? You can still do this if you're straight. You can still find that essence of self-love. Cause really that's the only way to move forward and that's the only way to have an abolition rather than a stupid fighting for scraps game that we have going on right now. Thanks for listening to my rant guys. I guess I just wanna let the world know that I'm not complacent anymore. I'm completely radicalized. I'm ready to fight in a good way. And I hope that we can continue to just release our shackles and actually solve these core issues and bring up the collective whole of women. Honestly, living my life with men at the center of it feels like I'm just playing the same level of a video game over and over again, where I'm like, I'm ready to level up. I hope you are too. It feels so good to reconnect with my angry teenage self. I hope she's proud of me. Bye bitches. And to all my subscribers who are men, just remember I love you. And this wasn't about you, it's about every other guy. Not you guys. You guys are the best. Mm -hmm.